What's up? It's Christmas Stone Fox Media. And before I get to the gaming news, I want to go ahead and do a quick review on the Captain America Winter Soldier. I know you're like, why the fuck is he doing this? I did say I was going to start doing other random things. I'm going to throw some of this stuff in here, okay? So I'm going to use a 10 point scale and I'm going to give the movie an 8 out of 10. And only because it's lacking in a few areas. One, the story was just a little bit off, just a tiny bit. And it wasn't super funny. It had like not as many funny moments because people compared it to the Avengers and said it was better than Avengers. I wouldn't say that. I mean, you did need parts where it was a little bit lighter and they failed to do that on a regular basis. A lot of times it was like, woe is me. Okay, but let me go in, into the movie real quick. I, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Captain America, he's ten times better than what he was in the first one. The first one, he was like a bitch. And Avengers, you were kind of like, why is people following him? Why do we even care that he even is... It's some super soldier who freaking came out of some ice. Why the fuck should anyone want to listen to him? But now, in the first five minutes of this Captain America movie, you will see why people should fucking follow him. He's kind of a badass. Dude was just flipping bitches all over the place. I was like, shit. It was fucking good. It was fucking good. The movie was good. Okay, the story had issues in it. I really wish they fixed on it. Uh, I would say it wasn't very surprising. Okay, a lot of parts in the story had you going, I wonder who's going to be the bad guy. I wonder what's going to happen next. The only surprising part happened in like the office with the old lady. And you'll know when you go see it, you'll be like, oh wow, that shit, I didn't see that shit coming. Other than that, you saw everything else coming 10 miles away. 10 fucking miles away. I really wish they, they, they fixed that. I really wish they did. Um, so would I recommend you going to see it tonight? I'd probably say go see the movie. It's not like a wait for DVD movie. Go see the fucking movie. You won't be disappointed. But if you're going in there like expecting like this to be like some corny ass movie, it's not corny. It's just it was some parts in the story. As soon as you get to the part in the bunker, you'll understand like what the fuck just happened. So I'm gonna say about it. Uh, moving on to actual gaming news. A five year old boy uncovers Xbox Live security flaw, and uh, basically you can log into uh, another person's Microsoft Xbox Live account without actually using a password. And this five-year-old kid, uh, basically, uh, he went online, I mean, and he went to Xbox Live, and rather than entering the actual password, all he did was press the space bar. Just press the space bar, and it just let him in. So basically, uh, Microsoft was, you know, informed about this, and upon receiving the report, the company fixed the flaw, and they added, you know, the, the, the kid to the list of security researchers, and thanked him uh, for with a contribution, you know, for keeping Microsoft secure. So what did he get? Did he get like ten thousand dollars? You know, maybe some stocks and bonds, maybe maybe something really cool. No. He got four free games, fifty dollars, and a year long Xbox Live Gold membership. Now I know they're not obligated to like give people shit. For fixing their stuff because they could have potentially saved millions of dollars should there be some gigantic security flaw. Okay, security flaws happen all the time. Look at Sony. They love security flaws. They keep getting hacked. I don't fucking know why. But what I will say this. This this gift is a little dingy, okay? It is. It's a little half ass. Fifty dollars, four games, and an Xbox Live membership. Shouldn't you have Xbox Live Gold for life? He only saved the security of it. I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but I will say that they could have did just a little bit better than that. Just a little bit. Maybe like $1,000, a trip to Disneyland, and Xbox Live for like ever and ever and ever. Now moving on from that news, the Mario Kart uh, reviews are starting to trickle in. And basically it's getting rave reviews from everybody. It says it looks gorgeous, fast, incredibly fun. They said, uh, you know, what they saw showcase a stunning kart racer that can stand up to anything on competing platforms. Not that anyone else has kart racers really on their competing platforms. But you know what? The game does look good, okay? You got to give credit where credit's due. They did a hell of a job with the game. I saw, you know, the gameplay footage. It looks pretty damn good. And if you're one of the lucky people who own a Wii U... This is probably the only game that's going to come out this year, so you might want to go grab this game, okay? Okay, it looks fucking good. Go ahead and play it. I thought it looks fun. If I had a Wii U, I would probably fucking buy it. You know what I'm saying? But moving on from that news, the Big Bang Theory 
uh, episode came out where basically Sheldon was supposed to pick an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4, and I said he wasn't going to do it, because if he did, he was going to get slayed. So what they did was, they made him not be able to pick up the console at all, because the registers closed, and he had to go home, basically. So he didn't pick either system, but he shitted on both systems by talking about it. More so, the Microsoft side kind of got dumped on a little bit more in the episode, if you actually watched it. I know a lot of people were like, well, why does it fucking matter? It mattered because, you know, you would want to know, like, why this super popular show, which one are they going to fucking pick? And I knew they weren't going to pick shit, because if they did, the fanboys from either side would have fucking destroyed them. They would have fucking destroyed them. Okay, fanboys do that. And for those of you who say, like, oh, man, you can buy both systems of a Sony or a PlayStation platform and still be a fanboy, that is incorrect. Okay, again, I'm a Miami Heat fan. You will never catch me buying an Indiana Pacers jersey or an OKC jersey. It will never fucking happen. It goes against everything that you are wired to believe. Take any team that you love and picture yourself buying some other one just because. It don't matter if you like the color. You ain't fucking buying that motherfucking jersey. I promise you, you're not. Because you're like, ugh, you're a betrayer. You can't fucking do it. So fanboys don't buy other systems because they're fanboys. Like PC Master Race people. They'll very rarely ever buy a console because they're like, we're so cool, we don't fucking like consoles. But I love consoles. I just fucking do. I just fucking do. Okay. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, you know, uh, Thank you guys for, you know, subscribing to my Facebook, my Twitch, my Twitter. I'm going to start doing, like, live uploads. I am shopping for this partnership right now, so I'll be able to start doing gameplay and, you know, game reviews and, you know, going down the whole entire line, doing all that other cool stuff. So, yes, that stuff is on the way. Go to my Facebook and go to my uh, Twitter account, you know, and hit those like buttons and follow me so that, you know, you'll know when I start dropping new videos. And I'm going to start doing giveaways. I know. Yeah, not corny ass giveaways, like really fucking cool ones. Like, I'm gonna start giving away like games and systems and shit. I don't fucking know why I'm gonna do it, but I kinda just wanna have fucking fun with this. You know what I'm saying? Take it to the next level. But that's all the news I got for you guys today. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook so you'll know as soon as my news becomes available. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll holler at y'all later.